If you have ever faced a personal crisis, and really, who hasn't, from, you know, acne as a teenager, to the myriad of experiences that we encounter and engage in as an adult, we have found within us somehow a power of purpose that has enabled us to take that experience head on, to engage in that experience with focus, with clarity, with an ability to set goals, with an ability to tap into the potential that lives inside of us in almost a supernatural way. It's as if we have taken our energy and focused it, just like we can take light and focus it through a magnifying glass to you know, focus in on a piece of paper and set it on fire. Did you guys ever do that when you were a kid? Take a magnifying glass and have the sun's rays go right through that magnifying glass and set the piece of paper on fire. I love that stuff. And then I taught my kids, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? But they loved it too. Somebody at the 9 o'clock was telling me that when he was in the third grade, he had learned how to do that from his parents. Good for his parents. He took the magnifying glass to school and he didn't get it back until the fifth grade. <laughs> but when something comes up in our lives or when we discover something and we feel that urge that something is emerging in us and needs our focus, we have that ability to just like taking the light from that diffused state where it's everywhere around and taking that light and sending it right through a magnifying glass. Technology today will actually send so much energy and light into a pinpoint focus that like a laser beam, it can cut through steel. So the wonderful gift of all of those experiences that have come up for us is we've realized we can do this. We can have a powerful purpose that we focus on. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of purpose where you go to the grocery store to get eggs and come home. Woo-hoo. I'm talking about the significant life purpose. Because when we consciously become aware of our significant life purpose, we, it, we have more well-being. We have a greater experience of our well-being in life. When we don't have that focus, then we tend to diffuse our energy to the point where the professionals call it, we have psychological discord. That's when we really don't seem to focus on anything and our, our well-being shows up as depression or anxiety or boredom. It, it embodies all of those sentiments that Eeyore had. Oh, I'd like to look on the bright side if I could just find it. I don't really have anything worth stealing. And then there you go, somebody comes along and takes your tail. Well, that, that is what happens when we don't pay attention to our holy purpose. When we do engage in our purpose, when we do engage in life, regardless of the circumstances, whether they're super wonderful or super challenging, when we do engage in our purpose, then we are happier people. We have more self-esteem. We have more self-confidence. We're actually in the flow of life. And when we're in the flow of life, we're in our genius. And when we're in our genius, we're in that state where nothing else seems to matter because we're so engrossed in living, in living big, in living happy. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, said this, Purpose gives joy and <coughs> zest to living. When our eye is on the goal, we are not so easily perturbed. Now, that doesn't mean we're never going to get perturbed again. Anger is holy. Joy is holy. Fear is holy. Excitement is holy. And all of those holy feelings come out of the same faucet. 
But if we didn't have so much perturbed stuff, that would be okay with us. I'm pretty sure. Purpose awakens new trains of thought into new fields of achievement. In unity, we feel that our holy purpose, we feel that our personal purpose is to experience as much of the absolute good as we possibly can. To experience as much of the absolute good that our consciousness can possibly conceive. If God were a person, God would say, my wish for you, my wish for you is to experience as much joy, as much happiness, as much peace, as much love as you possibly can. But God's not a person. God's not a person, so God can't wish that for you. God is God. God is. God is like substance. It's everywhere, just ready to be manifested, ready to be demonstrated. God is, God is like the air that we breathe. Air is everywhere present. God is like water to a fish. There's a wonderful story about a group of fishes who decided that they needed to discover this great thing called water. So they swam around and they were worried and they, they found hardship and they suffered and they swam around and they swam around and they were looking for this thing called water. And finally one day, as they were busy swimming and suffering, they found a very wise fish. And they asked the wise fish, where is the sea? And the wise fish responded, well, if you would stop swimming so busily, if you would stop swimming and seeking, you would discover that the sea is all around you. I think hardline religion, and this is my opinion, my opinion is that hardline religion wants us to spend our focus on seeking God. Seeking God so that we can have an experience later in the afterlife. Unity is not a religion. Unity is a way of thought. It's a philosophy. It's a movement. Unity is an affirmation of our wholeness. Unity, in unity, we experience God. In unity, we have a mystical and magical and spiritual experience of the divine. In unity, we are like-minded people, like-minded individuals who are congregating. We are collecting in rooms, in centers, in community all around the planet affirming our good health. We are like-minded individuals who affirm our prosperity, who affirm the wholeness of what we are, who affirm the outworking of our holy purpose, which is to experience as much good as we possibly can. Purpose awakens new trains of thought into new fields of achievement. I read a blog this week that said there are two ways to discover or to discern what your holy purpose is. It says there's a yin and there's a yang. And the yin is the one that we discover our holy purpose from the outside to the inside. So we take a look at what's happening in our lives. We take a look at what's happening in our world and see how that resonates in us. There was a story about a woman who had been on the spiritual path for some time, and she had done what we call the spiritual work. She had lifted her consciousness. She had committed to expanding her consciousness. She had committed to experiencing as much of the good as she possibly could. And at one point, she realized the family dynamics that she was experiencing with her daughter, the next right step, her new holy purpose was to adopt her granddaughter who was three years old. So she adopted her granddaughter, 
And with that expanded consciousness, now where the husband has a whole new holy purpose of bringing that little girl up in the world. There's another story about a young man who got diagnosed with breast cancer. You know, sometimes we can get these outside messages just like a feather, so gently floating down. When we're open to the guidance and the word of spirit through prayer and meditation, we hear that whisper, we feel that tingle, we hear that tickle or feel that tickle of intuition, but sometimes it comes like a Mack truck or a sledgehammer. And for this gentleman, it was a diagnosis. And what he did then, given that diagnosis, was he began to realize his holy purpose was healing his consciousness. He took a look at his beliefs. He took a look at his subconscious memories. He took a look at the thoughts that he was holding in his mind, and he brought them up to the surface one by one. And with that awareness, he began to heal his relationships. He reconciled with his wife. He had a new kind of relationship with his children. He got that from the outside in. There's another story of another woman who realized that her, her way was going to be going to workshops and hearing calls from God, just like that one. <laughs> just like that one. And the call said, go to this regression workshop, just like we're having on Sunday. It's, so she got the message to, I'm serious, she got the message to go to a regression workshop. And I don't know if you've ever been to one, but the entire room, all the participants are led through a guided meditation. It's facilitated. And, and through that facilitation, each participant is invited to go backward through time and look at some questions like, why did you choose this country? Why did you choose this time? Why did you choose this family? It invites you to go back and take a look. Why did you choose this gender? Why did you choose this race? Why did you choose these personality tra traits? And then the big one is, what is your holy purpose? It goes back to that soul level and says, what is your holy purpose? And this woman who was in the workshop, she realized what was emerging from within her. What was emerging from within was very powerful. And she kept hearing the word teaching, teaching, teaching. And her holy purpose was teaching. And so now this woman gives talks, and she gives workshops, and she, she does group work, and she has a private therapy practice, and she writes self-help books. And she said, everything she does now begins with this idea as her holy purpose. I will share with you what works for me and what I have found to be true from my experiences. When I look at unity, when I look at how unity views Jesus as a way shower, as a master teacher, and when I read through Christian scriptures, I see that this message is what Jesus was all about. I will share with you what works for me and what I have found to be true from my experiences. So when Jesus got started, the very first thing he did was he got baptized by John the Baptist, and then he went into the wilderness where he had temptations. And the temptations showed to him, up to him in various ways, but they were temptations like this. Why don't you play it safe? Why don't you play it safe? Why don't you be small? It's a big world out there. Why don't you make yourself small and depend on other people to do your work for you? You can do it like that. Or the second temptation is, why don't you just play the hand that you were dealt? Why don't you just take what you've got? Don't you know that life is supposed to be all about suffering and putting up with and going along to get along? That's a temptation. The third one is playing with fire. Why don't you take that power that you have and do something that really personally benefits you? Why don't you? Because we can. We can. We all have that fire within us that we could go play with and manifest great things. Why don't you? And what Jesus came back to is the I am presence that is in me. The Christ that is in me is here for a holy purpose. Is here for a holy purpose. 
In unity, we look at things metaphysically. We use the science and the philosophy of metaphysics to look at scripture because when we look at scripture scientifically, we can see how scientifically these scriptures are alive in us. And here's the metaphysical interpretation of that scripture. Temptations are tests and afford one an opportunity to exercise spiritual discrimination. Anyone who is imbued with the power of the Holy Spirit may be tempted to use his power for selfish purposes. If he remains steadfast to the good and overcomes the temptations, his spiritual power becomes even greater, and he demonstrates mastery. Metaphysically, if Jesus could do this, and if it worked for Jesus, it can work for us. His direct experience of God that was alive in him is alive in us to experience as much of the absolute good as we possibly can. Light a fire. Light a fire. Civil rights activist Howard Thurman said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. Then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. You are alive. I am alive. We are alive with a holy purpose. And it doesn't matter if it comes from the outside in or from the inside out. That's our holy purpose. That's our holy purpose. Let's affirm this together. I entrust my thoughts, words, and acts to the spirit of the I am within me. I am alive with purpose. Together, I entrust my thoughts, words, and act to the spirit of the I am within me. I am alive with purpose. I entrust my thoughts, words, and acts to the spirit of the I am that is within me. I am alive with purpose. Let's take that thought into meditation as we begin by singing, I am that I am has sent me. Mm -hmm. 